So y'all know me. Y'all know how I feel about movies. Y'all know how I feel about story. I love a good movie with a good story. Give me some solid action. Give me some good story. And the first Power Rangers movie, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers from 1995, was more action, more substance with action and fighting. And the story is it was okay. You know, it's very simple. Ivan Ooze returns, create havoc across the universe, across the world. You know, he missed all the horrible things out there, like the Black Plague, the Spanish Inquisition, the Brady Bunch reunion. Like he missed all those things. And we had a very fun villain. In Turbo, the Power Rangers movie, or a Power Rangers movie that came out in 1997, there was a more of a story with this piece. I enjoy the story. Does it make it a good movie? We'll find out in this episode of Movie Breakdowns. But before I get started, if there's a review you want me to do, let me know. Please put in the comment section below and I get to it as best I can. I also have Patreon, Patreon slash Ali Zaka. And for $2 a month, you get to cut in front of everybody, get your review out way before it comes out on Facebook and YouTube. Now, let's go and get to today's episode of 1997, a Power Rangers movie. Or, sorry, sorry, Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. 1997's Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. I just wanted to call it my more from Power Rangers Turbo because that's what the TV show was. That's what I watched. But it is what it is. So, what is this movie about? Well, this movie is about a space alien by the name of Diva Tox who is trying to get married to this demon lord, or demon king, whatever the case may be. But she needs to revive him. How to do that, she needs a wizard who she's chasing down who can unlock the volcano door or the steel cage door or the, the seal that keeps the demon king away. He can lock the seal and then she needs two human pure heart to pretty much sacrifice to this demon lord to for him to revive or for him to marry her as a matter of fact I, the really she need the wizard king the wizard lord to unlock the seal to open up the demon king's lair and then once she gets inside she said she's gonna offer two humans as pure heart but then thinking about it, watching about think about this movie right now because that's the plot she really didn't need two humans pure of heart. That plot point was completely unnecessary. Oh man. Okay, this review might get worse as I'm about to start diving into it. So, the things I like. Oh, and then the Power Rangers have to stop her because reasons. But the things, <laughs> the things I like is there's more of a story to this one. It, 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 you actually can follow it a little bit through and it's not like all over the place. I feel like the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movies were the first one was where it was like. It was a little bit more over the place when it came to like Ivan Ooze, like he would want to conquer the world, but then like why do you bring the, the parents into it? Because why not? And the kids to stop the parents because why not? And then, you know, they go to this layer, this universe, this other planet, and the lady warrior shows up because why not? <laughs> In exposition. This movie is feel like more of a TV show put on to the big screen. It wasn't so like they were just trying to do like more just now power just is ready for kids and it's purely cash grab and sell toys and that's what this movie was for. But it, like they the director felt like put a little more detail instead of just throwing a whole action fest. Like the first Power Rangers movie was more action fest and this one it was more flushed out versus Power Rangers showing up and then like fighting. Like in this movie you don't see the Power Rangers until this hour, movie's an hour and 39 minutes. I feel like the last 50 minutes you see the Power Rangers. The rest of it is like purely... No, that's not right. The last... The first hour you don't see them. I feel like you see them on the back half of the movie. Like 50 minutes into the movie you see the Power Rangers. And that's that's where you see them at. The add to this though... I did like that you, you got to see... The Power Rangers hang out more, I guess, but they hang out all the time. I... Diva Tox? I like Diva Tox. Thought she was quirky. What did I really like about this movie? Nothing stands out to me. I don't know if that's a good thing. Nothing actually stands out to me as a thing like I like. Like, I had fun. I did laugh. And there's scenes in here where Diva Tox, like, made me laugh and chuckle and... And 
I feel like the Power Rangers had more time to be themselves and display themselves. Like I knew more of their their characters, I guess. What was Tommy after? Oh man, I guess now I'm thinking about it, I guess I really don't have anything that stands out in this movie to me. Like it's it's a kid's movie. It's okay. Like it's 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 not. I've seen worse movies, but it's definitely basic. That's that's probably the best way to describe the things I like about this movie. Cause I'm thinking about it, and I I really I like the story. The story worked for me, and that's about it. I did like how they brought back into Jason. They brought back into um, Kimberly. They brought them back. Apparently, this is after Power Rangers Zio and Jason and Kimberly no longer Power Rangers, so they came back. So they didn't want to be pure of heart. The two showed up. And I did like the fact that the Power Rangers got to fight Jason and Kimberly. That was cool. Like that's like you see in other other Power Rangers stuff where they the Power Rangers. Well, I guess now you do, but back then you didn't see normal people fight the Power Rangers. Now, it's time to get to things I don't like. And this is where it's about to get messy. So, the dislikes in this movie, which is also part of the thing I like, is the story. There's so many plot holes in this movie that makes you wonder why this is happening and how come this is happening. So, the majority of this movie is exposition, exposition, exposition. Um, Larry Yacht comes to Earth because he's getting chased down by Diva Tox and he comes to Earth looking for Alfalfa and Lord Zordon and they send a signal out Kimberly and Tommy goes and rescue her they go through a junk or not rescue her but rescue Lurie guy who's, who's a male wizard um, anyway they go find him and Diva talks like, well, now that he escaped us, I guess I need to reveal that I have his wife and kid, and I'm about to take off the tele the telekinesis or telepathic blocker that the shield that she has on Lurigot's wife takes it off, and then she can connect to him telepathically while he's sitting with the Power Rangers freaking out, and they're like, make it stop, turn it off. What? He can tell he can telepath like he's a telepath to, with his wife so why did she wait till he ran away from her to pull that trump card because when when larry got gets confronted by his wife being kidnapped he teams with the power rangers and he just leaves the power rangers behind and goes off to save his wife and kids and get kidnapped and then he gets tossed into this chamber and apparently he's dying why is he dying? We don't know. But then by the end of the movie, Larry got storyline, he is not dying anymore. He's actually healthy. And you're just like, what's the point of telling us he's dying if he's healthy? Like, why, why did you throw that into the movie? What consequences did that have in the movie? Nothing. Kimberly and Jason come back. They get kidnapped. They get tossed into a volcano. So sacrifice. So like, oh, shoot. They just killed Kimberly and Jason. Oh, no. They, it, it's over for them. Then they get revived back as like evil Kimberly and Jason for a good four minutes and they fight the Power Rangers as evil Kim and evil Jason and Kimberly goes pink is so out of season but she's also wearing pink so why? Like why would she like what's the writing behind that? And then the reason for the comeback as evil and then apparently Larry Guy and his wife can just change change you from evil to good so they use their their magic weapons or the wizard wands and they changed Kimberly's a good and Kimberly's like oh no I'm a good guy now and you're like what's what's the point why did why was that necessary in the movie and then Jason who he just gets the evil knocked out of him I don't think they even no they use the magic thing on him too and he changed good and he's like oh okay we're on a good we're a good guy team again I'm like how did he know that like throwing into the fire was gonna bring back to life as evil spawns of the demon lord? And I guess he used their energy to get revived, but then Demon Talk tossed one of her minions into the fire because she's like, we don't need, I guess, pure heart, we just need a sacrifice. Like, so what's the point of getting the pure heart sacrifice? And then the demon king shows up in the volcano. By the way, oh no, the volcano's not on Earth, the volcano's in another dimension that's on Earth. 
like the Bermuda Triangle, but it's not the Bermuda Triangle. It's like Demon Triangle, something like that. Whatever case it be, can't think of the name of it. That the Power Ranger had to go on a magical boat to get to this place. And you're like, where did the boat come from? How do we know that the boat exists? All right, should we get into this place on this island? There's there's natives on here that apparently worship the Demon King that's been here the whole time. So why did they just sacrifice one of their selves to open the Demon King? But maybe they didn't know what Demon King was at and they needed this wizard who knows where the Demon King is at. Why does the wizard know where the Demon King is at? And why was the wizard on the run at the beginning of the movie? Why was Larry got on the run? How did the Demon Tox find him? Let him escape? But she had his wife and kids the whole time. So why didn't... <sighs> like... Storyline wise, it's what I like about the movie, but it's also the thing that I don't like about the movie. Okay, let's I mean plot holes in it. Also, the reason why the Power Rangers are together in this movie, they're they're doing a fighting tournament for a charity um, to give fun back to the homeless shelter for these kids. And um the Blue Ranger at the time, I believe it's Rocky, he is trying to Practice a spinning heel kick, and he's like, "Better not practice hard enough." And he throws his back out of place and land on his back and hurts himself. So he is out the movie, and then that brings in Justin, this kid who's part of the orphanage, who his father abandoned him, and the mom passed away, and he's talking to Cat about it, and Cat's like, "Yeah, oh, well, you know, hope things get better." Cause Cat works for the homeless shelter with the kids, and also. Um, Tanya works there too. I take the kids to the, I guess, to practice because they ain't no, no competition. Competing is a practice. The kids all on this bus ride trip to the practice for some reason. I don't know why they're there. The movie doesn't explain why the kids are there and why the shelter is so important. But you know, do it for the children. Anyway, Justin gets selected as the Blue Power Ranger. Why? Like, what was the what was the recommendation? What were the references for? This kid to be selected as the Blue Power Ranger. Apparently, Rocky off screen told him, Yo, I need you to step in my role. I know you're not ready for this, but go ahead and go. And the Alpha Alpha and Zordon was like, All right, cool. So when he transforms to the Power Ranger, he gets bigger and becomes an adult. But he's 100% a kid. And I understand you're selling it to kids. So as a kid watching, you're like, Oh my gosh, I can be a Power Ranger too. I'm a middle schooler Power Ranger versus. Grown adults, cause I don't think they're in high school anymore, right? It, it was so many plot holes in this movie that like, why? Also, why is Bulk and Skull in this series? Like, I I didn't like them as a kid. I don't like them as a dope. They're they're not funny. They're annoying. Bless their hearts to the actors who play them, but like, you guys are written in a most horrible way, and it, it's not funny. I never thought as a kid that these two are funny. It was just annoyance. <laughs> it was filler. It was the Dragon Ball Z cutaway to something else. Ah, ay, 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 ay. <laughs> but the, the story is one of the worst things that to me that, that bothers me. But the fight choreography in this movie is not as over the top and dramatic as the first one, which I guess that's the thing I like now. Think about it like with Kimberly versus and Jason versus the Power Rangers, I thought was a cool spot and I wish the movie would have lingered on that more. Matter of fact, I would love to have that be more of a storyline versus, you know, and they getting sacrificed and come back to life and like was it so there's no loss here. And then the Power Rangers team up, they transform into new Megazord, Turbo Zord, and they short the bad guy with no easy with no problem. You know, barely any inconvenience. And super easy, barely any inconvenience, and it's just like Alright. Sure, and Diva Talk is supposed to marry this monster character. I'm just like, who wrote this? Who wrote this? Okay, sure. That's that's probably the thing I don't like the most. Like the music is bland, but the story and plot holes is riddled with plot holes, and you just makes you wonder why. But I like the idea of this. I like the concept. I like the concept. I like this movie better than, than the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I I really, really do, actually. I really do. It's not over the top. It's like they, they, they sell it down, but a little bit too much. Okay, let's go ahead and get the cast details and actors and all that good stuff. 
So the movie came out in 1997. I actually thought it came out in in the 2000s, but no, 1997. It's an action adventure family movie, an hour and 39 minutes PG. It's ready for kids. The directors are Soki Levi and David Winning. Writers are Soki Levi, Cheryl Danielson, and Haim Saban. Or Saban, sorry. The budget for this movie was $8 million. It grossed worldwide $9 million, so it didn't make money. And the cast and crew, you got Jason David Frank, who plays Tommy. He's fine. The White Ranger's cool. Like, there's... They literally, he's literally just there to be like, I'm the leader of the Power Rangers. Eric, Eric, got problems. Let's let's figure it out. Catherine Sutherland, who plays Cat, she's fine. She's the Pink Ranger. I think she's Australian, actually. It's the first time I've realized that she's Australian, but she's fine. You have Steve Cordanis as Rocky. He's in the movie, but he gets knocked out. Johnny Young Bosch, who plays Adam, he's cool. Nakia. Burrise, who plays Tanya, she's the Yellow Ranger, she's fine. Uh, Rocky is the Green Ranger in this movie. And Steve was the, uh, no, not Rocky. Rocky was the Blue Ranger, and Adam was the Green Ranger. Blake Foster, who played Justin, he becomes the Blue Ranger, and there's not really much reason why he becomes the Blue Ranger, he just becomes him. Um, Jason Narvey, who plays Skull, he's fine. And Paul Shearer, who plays Farkas, Boak, um, he's fine as well. They're just, they're annoying to me. Amy Jo Johnson, who plays Kimberly. Kim was cool. It was cool seeing her in there. She's like her. And then Austin St. John, who played Jason. They're like, the, the, to me, they're the best part of this movie. They actually play, I and mean, maybe because they've known each other so long, they played off each other really well. I just like their dynamic. And I wish we had more of that. I wish we had more of them in this movie. Like the Zeo Rangers fighting the Turbo Rangers. That would have been a cool plot point that I could have got behind this movie. It just didn't give it to us. They they like, we'll give you the Gold Ranger, Pink Ranger versus the Turbo Rangers. But, yeah. Yeah. And then, also, can't forget about her. Hillary Shepard, who plays Diva Tox who is the main antagonist in this movie. She is quirky. She is like a dominatrix character. I think she has a whip. At one point, she also has a very long tongue for no reason, don't make any sense. Quirky cartoon character, pretty much villain who wears a, like a, a dominatrix outfit. That's what the way I look at it. Like she's diva, diva talks. Like she's all about the wedding and being seductive and seducive. It makes sense. Her character made more sense than uh, Dulcia in the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie. Having a character who is legit like the the evil version of sexuality as a villain, I got behind that. Like I thought it was fun. I was like, okay, this is a villain that makes sense to me. She wants to get married to so be rich and rule all the universe and everything like that, but she wanna get married to a demon lord. But like she's doing all these these things to really harass. She's not really causing any problems. Like she didn't blow anything up. She didn't destroy anybody. She was legit trying to cause Evil, and I guess the only reason the Power Rangers jumped in was to save Larry Guy, who was played by John Simiton, and that's the only reason the Power Rangers got involved. It wasn't if she legit used the the the, the telepath between Larry Guy and his wife and kids and began the movie. This movie wouldn't happen. Power Rangers wouldn't know that Larry Guy was escaping onto Earth. Like there would be no distress city. Well, why did he run to Earth? I don't know. Oh no, Alfalfa and Zordon was there, but. Diva Talk didn't even like fight the, she didn't know who the Power Rangers was. She actually asked Rita how to defeat the Power Rangers. Rita was like, run. What are you doing? Just get out of there. <laughs> like, you hype up your new big bad by telling the old big, by the old big bad telling them, hey, yeah, don't mess with the Power Rangers. They're like John Wick. <laughs> That's a concept. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> yes. That's. I, I did enjoy Diva Tox. I thought she was fine. And then John Simmonton, who played Larry Guy, he was okay. Like, the alien, he was an alien wizard who couldn't speak. And there's a part where Cat goes, they, they know how to talk to each other. And 
Zodan goes, friends understand each other. What? Who wrote that? Who wrote that? Any other thoughts? Not really. Like the 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 fact they got turbo outfits didn't really add to the story. Like why was it necessary for them to become turbo rangers? Nothing. There was no reason for it. They just because they wanted to sell toys. This movie's really just to sell toys and merchandise. Other than that, it's not really like anything worthwhile. Is this the worst movie out there? No. This is the the best? Heck no. Is it good? You know, you just want to go watch a popcorn flick and cut your mind off. You'll be fine. If you want, like, you, it, and sadly, you know, I love stories. I love reviewing stuff. This movie is not that good of a movie. Like, when you start diving into, like, the plot holes into this movie, you're like, God, why? Like, why? Like, how did Alfalfa get a signal on how to find Larry Guy? Maybe he's, like, sending a signal to Alfalfa. I just, yeah. This movie literally could not happen if DV Talk just used the, the wife plot early in the movie. This movie would never happen. Why did Justin become the Blue Ranger? I still don't know. He just does. Not because he's pure heart. Not because he... Like Rocky Lewis said, I just need somebody from my spot. Can you go? Why would he think a freaking 12-year-old boy would be able to step in his spot? I don't know, but it happened. It worked. It worked. Music... Eh, it's okay. CGI in this movie is not that good. Like, there's a whole scene where it's straight blue scene, blue screen, where a green screen, where Tommy is trying to save Jason, or Jason has Tommy pinned down, and this pit movie looks so far down, like it's like down, like the volcano pit movie into the volcano, like it's like deep, but it's not that deep, and it looks like Jason and Tommy are over a green screen that is just it's not not good. It's really you can see it. It's irksome. It's irksome. It's, yeah, it's a kid's movie, though. I enjoyed Turbo, though, as a kid. I had fun as a Turbo, as, as a kid with Turbo, so it did its job. All right. Is it a Friday movie? No. No, it's not. In grading time. I'm going to grade Power Rangers, or Turbo, or Power Rangers movie. I am going to give this movie, I'm going to give this movie a D, give this movie a D, a 65%. I'm putting it right there with the first Power Rangers movie. I had fun with this movie. I did have fun. I had more fun with the first Power Rangers movie. It, it's just riddled with plot holes. And I, I don't want to give it an F because I had a good time. Like it's not it's not horrible where it's like I could it was boring. I did I was entertained. I was entertained and you know what? For that, it gets a D for me. It gets a D. <laughs> like other than that, I the story I love the story. I like the concept of the story. It's not a bad story. Like I love it. I love the concept of the story. The action wasn't over top and goofy like the first movie. And the character didn't scream and shout, yeah, all right. And I understand when you turn the power on, you, you can't move your mouth, so you have to be more over the top and dramatic so you can get your point across. But at the same time, the plot holes in this movie and why things happen, it's... And then by the 20th Power Rangers, so you know that, like, the writing is not going to be good. Yes, I'm giving it a D, 65%. IMDb gives this movie a 3.6 out of 10. Rotten Tomato gives this movie a 15% by the critics. And the audience gives this movie a 40%. One of the critics' consensus is no, no Power Rangers. <laughs> Which is hilarious. No, no Power Rangers. It's, yeah. Yeah. Somebody goes, like the TV series, the pick features, makeup, special effects, gimmicky, Gimmickry that are far less persuasive than what might be found at second rate theme park attractions. God, that's from 2008. Another person with minimalist and universal fantasies as their point of departure, the only super heroic, sorry, super heroic deeds involve only incremental, incrementally beyond a realistic, a deeply satisfying process. Don't know what that means. 
evolves only incrementally beyond a realistic. Five-year-olds who have read their Shakespeare will recognize that turbo is a lot of sound and fury signifying nothing. You know, and that's another thing when it comes to turbo, because turbo reminded me of the actor TV show. It's like it was like a TV show made for the big screen. And why I say that because the TV show usually opens up with something with real life characters that go through something and make a lesson they have to learn. And at the end of the movie or in the show, they, they they fight the bad guy and go back to what they were doing at the beginning of the episode or where something around the next day with all in the beginning of the episode and the lesson that came from the episode revealed itself at the end of the show. And that's what usually most Power Rangers went. Like you start off like they're at the food court and somebody's being selfish, something like that. And then like they go through and they're like learning teamwork. And then at the end of the episode, they go back and they share. And you're like, oh, teamwork, sharing is caring. Yay. Um, this movie tried to do that, but there's no reason behind the, the shelter. Like we didn't care for the shelter. We didn't care about the kids. Like J I guess Justin put be the reason to care, but like Justin became a Power Ranger. Why do I care about you? I don't. And I think, <laughs> and I think this movie and the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie had the same thing. Like, you didn't care about the people. You didn't care about the Rangers. You just came for the Rangers and the outfits and everything, but you did not care. And the first Mighty Morphin Power Rangers were the first ones that was more behind that. People got behind that more. Versus Turbo, which is like, you're just trying to get a, cash, a crash grab. A cash grab. Trying to sell toys. And we can see it. And, like, besides the nostalgia of seeing Jason and and Kim back in the fold, and you're like, oh my god, Jason and Kim is back. Yay! Besides that, it's... Uh, yeah, it's it's not that great of a movie, and the lesson, there's no lesson to be learned. Like, I don't know what these characters walked away with at the end of this movie. Nothing. Nothing. Jason comes back and fights in the tournament with Billy, or not Billy, with Adam and, and uh, Tommy, and you're just like, okay. They got the money for the shelter. Okay. I'd be nice to know what the shelter's about. I know it's a homeless kid's shelter, but like nice to know what, what how the kids feel about this. Give me something. Give me something. But all right, that's my review of Power Rangers. Sorry, Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. I'm not sure I keep doing that. Power, I only call it Power Rangers Turbo. But my review of Turbo, Power Rangers movie. If you've seen Turbo or Power Rangers movie from 1997, what did you think? Please put in the comment section below. On that, see you guys in the next episode of Movie Breakdowns, and keep being awesome. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I really appreciate that. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. If there's a review you want me to watch or do, let me know. Please put it in the comment section below this video. Also, you want to watch the last episode of Movie Breakdowns. It's right there. Just got to click on it, and you'll be able to watch it. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Love y'all and keep being awesome.